who are convinced that this new administration, the second go-round for Trump, is going to be that, but just taken orders of magnitude in terms of chaos, upheaval, and, as you were mentioning earlier, the potential for retribution against the Justice Department being asked to sort of turn its focus uh, on entities that maybe people there are not really interested in prosecuting, like Georgia, or maybe even prosecutors within their own department. I have been a career prosecutor under two administrations. That's not of them operating under that sort of Damocles, with all the work they actually have to do to think, is this the day that what I'm actually working on is taken away? And it's not just the DOJ employees. We had Mark Zaid on our airwaves um, earlier today. He's a national intelligence lawyer. And there are employees who are so worried about retribution that he is actually advising them in some respects to even maybe leave the country for a while. I'm not saying sell your home, move overseas, never come back, become an expat. I'm telling certain clients, take a vacation for inauguration and let's see what happens in the days or week or two uh, afterwards. Actually considering this? Yeah, I mean, look, within the department, especially the people I think that are the most concerned at this point uh, are to the investigations of Trump, to the prosecutions of Trump, to special mm -hmm. counsel Jack Smith, to special counsel Robert, even a minor or arguably a trivial capacity in any of those investigations is concerned, you know, maybe at the higher level that they might target it uh, by the new administration. And at the lower level, I think the concern is that they might just be shuffled off to some desk in the corner or something like that, where they're just going to be essentially marginalized for Trump's entire term. And they have to think carefully about the professional consequences of What is Trump's vision of an AG this time around? I mean, he had several the first time, beginning with Jeff Sessions. And of course, we've seen the Jeff Sessions. He viewed that particular role. Loyalty was essential. Has that changed this time around? Well, I think he's probably still looking people that will carry out his uh, vendettas and target people in the way that he has always talked about prosecutors targeting people. He did this to him, did this to other people, and he wanted to see that done for him. I think there are already people around him that are trying to focus on reform. They think there need to be changes in the way the department does things, and they might desire that he appoint someone who maybe would be seen as 115,000 employees. It's not a trivial kind of workforce to try to manage. He might need somebody that can be taken seriously rather than somebody that's just going to come in and sort of flail around, which I think is the way Trump views his attorneys general having been done. Uh, you see these arguments being made to Trump sort of behind the scenes, and we don't quite know yet what type of person he's going to pick. Well, one of the first administration was the firing of FBI Director James Comey. It's intended for the FBI director to have a period in a four-year administration. Do you see Christopher Wray as holding on to his job in this next administration? I think it's, um, if you look at the coterie of people around Trump and the things that they've said about Christopher Wray, mm -hmm. if you look at the things that the Republicans on Capitol Hill that are Christopher Wray, I think they say that they gave him sort of a, uh, a chance to try to fix a lot of the problems that they thought they saw coming in, in terms of Trump's concerns about surveillance directed at his campaign or his campaign advisors uh, the last time around 2016, uh, not enough to reform the place. My sense is that we'll see Chris Ray depart one way or another sometime before or after the inaugural about potentially appointing a new FBI director. Which then, of course, adds a whole different layer to the idea of instability and the absence of institutional knowledge sector, a very important one, especially Josh. Thank you so much for Breaking news, Trump naming his pick to head the Department of Defense. That's the Fox News host Pete Hegseth. Hegseth has been a longtime staunch Trump defender. This is a president who has said, I want to make America great again. And he's up against the forces of the left, never great. All right, so you, you can see exactly where he stands, and he has been consistent in that. Hegseth is an Army man, and it comes as the Wall Street Journal, of course. This hour is reporting that the Trump transition team is considering a draft executive order, which would establish a quote-unquote senior military personnel with the power to remove three- and four-star officers that they want. Out front now, the Democratic Congressman Dan Goldman of New House Democrats during the first Trump impeachment. He's on the uh, Committee for Homeland Security, and we were going to talk about Governor Nome and her role there, but uh, the world has changed, and the world has changed in a few ways. First is Pete Hegseth, Trump choosing him, the Fox News host, uh, Pete Hegseth for Defense Secretary. I'm shocked, truly, and this is exactly what uh, we worried about and we warned about Donald Trump, which is that he is going to loyalists 
to shape this government into his own personal fiefdom and get revenge on, um, and put essentially really unqualified people. I appreciate Mr. Hegseth's service uh, for in, in our armed forces, but it does not make you qualified to lead the Department of Defense and to have access to our nuclear weapons. Uh, I'm very concerned about what it demonstrates about Donald Trump's priorities, uh, which now seem to be coming true as many of us warn. Looking here, we really just had this news for just a few moments. Uh, and I, so we've been, obviously, as a Fox News host, he said a lot of things over the years. Let me just play a little bit, play Congressman, about Trump. And what I'm going to play now is from 2019. God has used yeah. her because we're all imperfect, but what he has withstood is unlike what really any other mortal yeah. could, could, could uh, understand. Talking about God has used uh, imperfect people there, referring it to, to Trump. Uh, look, he's a television host. There's going to be thousands. Um, what, what do you hear when you hear that? Look, I mean, that was 2019. That was before January tried to overturn an election. That was before Donald Trump hid classified information in his bathroom and refused to give it back, uh, Vladimir Putin. This guy is clearly a sycophant for Donald Trump and has been his biggest cheerleader on Fox News. Um, and that is not what makes one qualified to be a cabinet secretary and secretary of defense. And the fact for it is very dangerous for our national security. It's bad enough that you have Christy Nome, who has zero experience with the border, with Hunter from South Dakota, heading up our Department of Homeland Security. Now you have a, uh, a Fox News host who's, who's got his... It's very dangerous. So what do you think about the Hegseth selection as Secretary of Defense in the context of the Wall Street Journal reporting? In case you didn't hear, Congressman, is that um, Vivian Salama is reporting that they've been working on a potential draft executive order that would give a so-called move senior officers, three- and four-star officers. So, th th look, that's a draft, but that's the context here. And you've got now Pete Hegseth from Fox News. So what do you think is going to happen here with the Defense Department? Well, I think Pete heads whatever Donald Trump wants him to do. And Donald Trump has made it very clear that he is going to politicize the entire government. And I'm just hearing about this news now. I'll have to look into this executive order a little bit more. But if yeah. it is as you say, and you have Pete Hegseth, who's essentially an arm of Donald Trump, to target three and four star generals. Who do you think's up first on that? Uh, other, you know, McRaven, other uh, Mark Milley. I mean, these are people who have stood yeah. up as patriots for our country, Donald Trump. And this is what Donald Trump will do to get revenge and retribution against them. And Pete Hegseth is clearly the bet. All right. Now, as we were speaking, there was.